people of the internet, my name is Johnny and we just got the very exciting news that a sequel to the Five Nights at Freddy's movie is now officially in development. So we're going to be talking about the announcement, everyone and everything set to return in this upcoming film, filming dates as well as our own personal thoughts and theories for what we think is going to be happening in this sequel film. So if you guys are excited for the second FNAF movie, don't forget to scroll down and subscribe to the channel. It's kind of crazy to think that only one month ago we got the release of the very first FNAF movie and now here we are already talking about news on a second film. Or I guess maybe it shouldn't be that surprising seeing as how the FNAF movie is now the highest grossing horror film of the entire year. I mean that's surpassing massive IPs like The Nun 2, Scream 6, Saw 10, like there's a lot of very good horror films that released this year and FNAF's on top. It's also past 2016 Split to become the highest grossing Blumhouse film ever and as I'm recording this video we're almost at 300 million dollars made worldwide at the box office. Taking into account the budget for the FNAF movie was roughly 25 million and they already made that money back by just selling the streaming rights. I mean, it's kind of no wonder why we're already getting the announcement for the second film like this first film has been massive. It just released on digital, it's still running in theaters. On the 12th of December, it comes out on Blu-ray and DVD. And also in the past, we've heard Scott Cawthon and Matthew Lillard say that they do have plans for three films total. Again, it's kind of no wonder we've already gotten the announcement for the second film. But anyways, now let's talk about the announcement itself because we got reports from the Hollywood handle over on Twitter. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is in the works with Emma Tommy returning as the director. And in the article itself, they say the horror movie hit adaptation Five Nights at Freddy's is getting a sequel, and director Emma Tommy is coming back to helm the project. The Hollywood Handle has exclusively learned that Tommy, who directed the first film adaptation of the popular video game series, will return to direct Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which is expected to start production in 2024. It is currently unknown which other cast and crew will be returning for the sequel, but once production commences, more should be revealed to the public. So that is actually the whole announcement. We don't have too much to go off of. We know that Emma Tommy, who directed the first FNAF film, which I thought she did a wonderful job directing this film. She is coming back to direct the second film. We also know that production is set to begin in 2024. And actually, we had Insider and Tom clarify what that exactly means. They took to Twitter to write the FNAF 2 film has been in pre-production for about half a year now, prior to its announcement, which just happened. However, filming is aiming for an early-ish 2024 date. We've even had reports about the current script for the second film. Once again, from the same Insider, despite being in development for quite some time, the script for the FNAF sequel is currently being reworked in response to feedback from the first film. And Tom clarifying once again that the plot and story is relatively the same and has been planned out. However, the screenplay itself is undergoing reworking from Scott. They are not starting over completely from square one, and this lines up pretty perfectly from what we've heard from Scott himself over on Reddit, where in a Reddit post earlier in November, he wrote, anyways, thanks everyone for making opening weekend such a big success. It was beyond my wildest dreams. I do read the comments and critiques, so while I'm glad that most people had a great time at the movies, I'm definitely paying attention and I wanted you all to know that. Because as I'm sure we're all aware at this point, FNAF fans absolutely adored the film. We ate up every single second we got to see Freddy Fazbear up on the silver screen. The audience score on Rotten Tomatoes sitting at, ironically enough, an 87%. But quite frankly, critics kind of panned the film. Right now it sits at 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very, very low. It seems like Jason Blum and Scott and everyone working on the film really wanted to make a film for the fans. In fact, we kept hearing them say that over and over again during the lead up to the release. But if you make a film for only one very select, very niche market, everyone else is not going to enjoy it so much. So as honored as it does feel as a FNAF fan to have a film catered towards you, I really do hope the feedback they're listening to involves you know, making it more accessible to people who aren't familiar with Five Nights at Freddy's. But anyways, getting back on track, let's go back to Emma, because she has revealed in the past kind of her plans for the second film. She said, we're definitely excited to keep making more movies in this world. Should we be lucky enough to do that? Keep in mind, this article was released on Halloween, so before the FNAF 2 movie was greenlit, this first film was tied into the first game, and we would probably focus on tying the second film into the second game, and so on and so forth. But anything could happen, well, have to wait and see. Now, quite frankly, that makes a whole lot of sense. Having a Five Nights at Freddy's 2 movie focus on the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 game. But there are a 
a few complications with that. Number one, in case you may or may not be aware of, the FNAF 2 game is actually a prequel, so it happens before the FNAF 1 game. There already has been a bit of timeline changes in the film universe, for example, FNAF 1 actually takes place in the year 2000, while the events of the main FNAF 1 game take place in the early 1990s. So already there's a bit of changing with the timeline, I can definitely see them making the second film actually a sequel instead of a prequel because imagine having another FNAF film without Mike, without Abby, without Vanessa, because the first time Mike and Abby learn about Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is in this first film, so I definitely do not think that this second film is going to be a prequel, I do think it's going to be a continuation. Now that William Afton is dead, of course he will come back, he always comes back guys, come on. I can see the second film having a brand new owner of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, he tries to reopen it, you know, introduce all the brand new shiny toy animatronics who are definitely definitely safe because they feature that facial recognition you know this is probably a couple years maybe only a couple months in the future i don't know technology has advanced and this ends up bringing mike and abby and vanessa back to freddy's i mean there is already a whole bunch of fnaf 2 imagery in this first film most notably the balloon boy figurine in the post credit scene we do hear a voice spell out come find me i think the general consensus is that that is the puppet especially because we can hear the puppet's music box during that credit scene actually play while the voice is talking that could possibly possibly mean that maybe the FNAF 2 location is already open, you know, the puppet is at that FNAF 2 location, come find me, I'm in a different location. And actually, going back to interviews with Emma, she did touch upon some loose ends in the first film that it seems like they're going to explain in the second film. The first question about Aunt Jane, did she actually die? That would obviously be a big problem for Mike and Abby if the person challenging for custody of Abby wound up dead in their house. If she survived, it would still be a problem, although maybe she'd be traumatized by what happened that she dropped her claim and deceitful plan altogether. To which Emma responded with, we have a few loose ends that I think are going to have to come back in the sequel to be tied up. And the article laid that out perfectly. If Aunt Jane is dead, that's a big problem. Mike and Abby have a lot of explaining to do to the court. If she turns out to be alive, does she still want to try and get custody of Abby? To me, that seems like kind of a niche plot to still continue into a second film, so if she is still alive, I hope they do something different with her character. Another loose end was about Garrett. Garrett's ghost slash body wasn't in any of the animatronics, right? I suppose you would have had a moment between him and Mike if he was. Emma responding pretty vaguely, I feel like that could also be a nice thing for the fan base to mull over. I'd love to not shut down anyone's theories. The article neglects to bring up Vanessa, even though I'd say that's another pretty big loose end that needs explaining. I do think Vanessa is going to live. I feel like if she was going to die, they would have had a more conclusive scene like a funeral. Plus, like I said at the start of the video, fans have fallen in love with the actor and actresses in this film, so getting Elizabeth Lale back, I'm sure, is on Blumhouse's mind. Also, speaking of ghost kids, it seems like there is some unfinished business between Afton and the spirit-possessing Golden Freddy, like we see at the end of the film. That, of course, is a major plot point in the games and something that I'm sure we're gonna see expand upon, maybe not in the second film, but probably the third film. I think something that I've been struggling to wrap my head around is how they're going to do the withered animatronics. The toy's very easy explanation. Someone reopens Freddy Fazbear, they've got brand new animatronics, they're cute, they're cuddly, they're friendly, you know, they have facial recognition to make them safe. A theory I had, which I'm not completely on board with, I'd love to know your thoughts. At the end of the first film, we see the building kind of collapse in, or at least the roof caves in. It seems very likely that the animatronics would be damaged by something like that, so maybe when we see them next, when someone goes into that abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza place, they sort through the rubbage, they find the FNAF 1 animatronics, they take on the appearance of the withered animatronics, you know, Bonnie's missing his face, Chica's missing her arms, though a major problem with that, and I'm sure you're shouting at your screens right now, despite the FNAF 2 withered animatronics and the FNAF 1 animatronics, presumably being the same animatronics, they look nothing alike. And so having them reuse the bases for the FNAF 1 characters and turning those into the Withers, I feel like could look a bit off. I guess the Withers could just be another set of, you know, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, but then it's missing the spirit kids we saw in the first film. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you want them to do with the Withers? Another thing we got to think about are all the secrets, all the Easter eggs. We've heard in the past that Markiplier was supposed to be in the first film. He was planned to be the Freddy security guard we saw at the start of the film before Mike gets the job. However, Mark was filming his own movie at the time, though Scott Cawthon did say he wants Mark to be in a future FNAF film if they happen. So I really do think Blumhouse, Universal, Scott are gonna try their absolute best to get Markiplier into this film. It seems like Mark wants to be in it as well. The first film also had plenty 
plenty of secrets and easter eggs for fans to spot like Sparky the dog, Ella, as well as Shadow Freddy. And FNAF 2 is kind of known for being the game that really bumped up the easter eggs like Shadow Bonnie and JJ and the endoskeleton. There was an endo in this first film that you could spot in a few shots though in FNAF 1, you know, in the game, there wasn't an endoskeleton that walked around the pizzeria so this was a bit out of place. Though it was welcome but at least in the second film, they now have a reason and an explanation for why there's just a random endoskeleton walking around. Because in FNAF 2, if you didn't wind up the puppet's music box, an endoskeleton 02 would pop out, he'd make your way towards your vents. I mean, there's just so much fanfare that you can cram into this film, you know, coming off a film that was already packed full of fan service. And we still need explanation for the connection between Mike and the Afton family, you know? Why did Afton go after Garrett? What's up with Mike's dad? Is he actually Henry? If he is, does Charlie exist in this universe? Is she possessing the puppet or is it Garrett? There are just so many answers that I really, really want to see in this film and I'd love to know, what do you want to see in this FNAF 2 film? Like we've mentioned, pre-production is already well underway, filming starts early next year, so pretty damn soon we're going to be getting a lot more info on this next film. So again, subscribe so you don't miss out on any updates regarding the FNAF 2 movie. That's going to be it for this video, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.